and the hill. Yeah. Do you think it's like too serious or do you get some better? No. <laughs> Good. <laughs> no, it's not just me being extremely unfit. No, it's you do every day you're like, Why? It hurts. It hurts. Fair enough. Okay, so okay. I'm just gonna clap just so we get the audio yeah. like synced. So okay, let's bring it down a bit. One, two. Okay, why did you choose to volunteer with Professors Without Borders? I chose to volunteer with Professors Without Borders because I think it's just such an amazing cause and I think what they've managed to achieve in their first pilot program is incredible, 126 students on a pretty tiny budget actually. And I think the inspiration came from there that, you know, we've all sat in classrooms, we've all been bored of people lecturing at us rather than, you know, talking to us and teaching us. So the idea that we can do something different, the idea that we can teach the next generation to open up their minds and to think in a different way, that, you know, knowledge is to be shared rather than you know, just kind of given and really encouraging the desire to learn more. Those are all things that hit with me and I couldn't really imagine doing an internship anywhere else. Would you recommend it to anyone else? And if yes, why? I would definitely rec recommend working for Provivo to anyone really, mostly because it's such a fast growing organization that you see how um, your effort is helping grow it further. So, you know, every day to day you see it growing and you see how your work actually contributes to it. You're not just a numberless <laughs> or a nameless intern somewhere. You are a person that is helping grow the organization each and every day and your efforts have a direct impact. Did you have any teaching experience prior to this trip? So I had some teaching experience. Um, I started a charity when I was in high school and I was teaching elementary school students there uh, in Ghana. So that was kind of my teaching experience. But again, it's nothing close to teaching university students and especially university students that are asking you for more and more knowledge um, and you have to keep up and you know people that will call you out if they aren't seeing what they need to be seeing and they will always be asking for more and they'll be asking for quality. What have you learned as a result of this experience? Oh, I've learned a lot. <laughs> so I actually started off as the branding officer um, and then moved into a grant coordinator to a full-blown project manager for a program. And then I led the team in Uganda. So I've kind of transitioned through all these roles, which has taught me really both the attention to detail, but also to sometimes let the details go and, you know, just focus on the big picture, which for me was a completely new experience. But I've also been taught to really, you know, put the greater picture in the first place. So what are we going there for? We went to Uganda to teach these girls. And then why is it relevant to them? And I think this whole idea of always coming back to why is it relevant to someone else can help you in your workplace so much because usually when we're doing our everyday jobs we're always stuck in one little part and we're not really seeing how it fits in with the overall mission and objective. What advice would you give to future volunteers? I would say just be ready for anything. Um, that's my biggest piece of advice that I can share. You know, be ready that things will go wrong because they do go wrong. Um, whether you're volunteering in London or you're traveling with us to a program or you know anywhere in the world where you are, things will go wrong. Um, it's just the nature of a startup and ultimately we are a startup. So be ready to learn from your mistakes, be accepting and invite criticism because that's the only way you learn. And you know, be ready to give it your all. We, we all volunteer our time, but we have a standard we expect. So if you're willing to stick to the standard and if you're willing to give up your time but have an incredible experience then Professors Without Borders is definitely the place for you. What was the biggest challenge you faced? Um, in teaching or? In teaching. In teaching. Oh my biggest challenge was actually my very first class. That was terrible. 
like my first class was actually a nightmare and I went back to my team and I said okay that's it I'm not doing this anymore I'm quitting it was dead um, I wasn't getting any responses from my st from my students they weren't interested in my class at all um, I was teaching global politics and what I got from them was oh but we don't care about the world we just want to know about Africa and Uganda so obviously to me who spent months and months planning a global politics course with global case studies I kind of went back into my little hut and I was like, oh God, <laughs> here we go, <laughs> starting from square, well, starting from square one, really. And um, that was quite discouraging at first, but again, you never go alone. You go with an incredible team and my team was really the essence of what made my teaching experience so great. So they get back, they got back to me. They were like, no, 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 it can't be that bad. <laughs> it's like, it's okay. I was convinced my students hated me. Um, <laughs> So, you know, just having the time to sit back, reevaluate, and then go at it again, use all my teaching aids and know that I'm more than capable of kind of bringing the class back from its first slump to a massive success in the end um, was amazing. So really it was just getting over that first class that was probably my biggest challenge. Okay, great, thank you so much. You're welcome, hope that was any good.